uh, expanding my media empire. Yes. Yes, I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, yeah, high vibration. High yeah, vibration. that's crazy. Yeah, so um, that's the vibe we're rolling on. And uh, as you can see, we got a, a map up here. This map has come up several times in our conversations, brother. Um, would you would you want to tell us a little bit, a bit about this map? And then we're going to go in and play that video clip that we had issues with last week. Right. So um, one thing that when people look at this map, they have to understand is that there's a reason why it's called the Airy 3 and C, right? Um, mm. And when we understand the title of this room, even connecting back just for you know what we were saying earlier, as far as these, these individuals debating each other, the people that have uh, been running the world your, your voice, your voice is a little bit muffled. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Just, just a little muffled. Right. Kind of sound like you're in a box almost. All right. Yeah, no, I'm actually uh, walking back and forth. Um, can you hear me? Am I? Yeah. Am I coming in? Okay. You, you coming so, in? Yeah. Right yeah. Okay. So uh, this this map is showcasing, at least for me, one of many things. First is connecting this water that was being traversed, right, by an ancient group of people that come from the very same place, the only country in this world is called Eritrea. And it's fittingly so called the Eritrean Sea, right? Um, when we look at many expeditions that were made, not just the Egyptians, right, but other individuals and other cultures were coming to this port of Adalus in Eritrea, modern day Eritrea. Um, and that's why there are books like this. There is maps called the Eritrean Sea. Uh, that's why when you look at the Dead Sea Scrolls, guess what? You all see Eritrea in there too. That's why every time when we talk about the, uh, the you know, from last connecting last shows to this show, the ancient Egyptians, and where did they come from? That's what we're trying to paint a picture for you, uh, for you guys today, and the coming, uh, the you know, future shows on against the grain. So keep keep one thing in mind, right? When we're looking at this issue and we're talking, you guys, remember the attributes, right? Because this is huge. To name some, to name a sea after somebody. And rightfully so to do it, not just to say it because you wanted to call it whatever you'd like to call it, but you had to have some kind of understanding of who was traveling these waters. It is as clear as day that we can see going to Tamil, which is ancient India. And in Tamil, when you even pull out the brother Renoko Rashidi's book, he will show you, right, how he connects certain dots back into East Africa. Well, it's only showing you so many ports alongside that Red Sea. And once again, <laughs> the one country named after the Red Sea, Eritrea, Eritrean Sea. Um, <laughs> we're starting to paint a picture here, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully. So one thing is for sure has nothing to do with Ethiopia, because that's another um, term that gets used uh, by a lot of scholars when they talk about ancient Egyptians. It has nothing to do with Ethiopians whatsoever. Right. So this this is another reason why we're showing you guys these slides. So when you're looking at history and people are telling you Ethiopian, you should know it's not kind of similar to what Noble Jurali would teach. Right. He would tell you it's not. So and when we start to understand this history of individuals that have worked with these same Europeans, these same colonizers that have affected us all, then we'll start to realize what's really going on. So um, just to kind of touch on that, uh, uh, on this map real quick. Yeah, no, that was, uh, that was really, um, insightful. And I think, um, you are starting to, uh, paint the picture because one thing that I picked up on as you were speaking, I'm looking at all of the different ports and I'm noticing, and I, I've, 
you know, I've been aware of this map for about 15 years or so. Um, but what I'm noticing is that if the Indian Ocean was the Eritrean Sea, that means all of these ports uh, in this sea <laughs> belong to Eritrea. Uh, well, wait, you know, just a, it, just just a, yeah, just to, just to, just to touch on that a little bit even more. The most sacred river in in, in Tamil is named after an East African. And that right there in future episodes, we're going to talk about a little bit more because then we're going to showcase how in ancient times, it could have only been so many kingdoms that were doing this in East Africa. And the beauty about um, over the years using Clubhouse and now being on Twitter, uh, finally going to be, uh, you know, we're doing the YouTube, um, is that we get to bring in individuals from East Africa. We get to bring in individuals from around the world and have these conversations and say, hey, look, in your part of the world where you are at, did you hear about any of this? And then they tell us, no, we don't even know what you're talking about. Okay, well, over here, the colonizers got people believing something crazy. I just want to confirm that the history is still what it's supposed to be. It's like when you go into an Ethiopian museum, most of it's going to say Eritrean. You know, when you go into a British museum, most of it's going to say African. Yeah. So it, it's just this weird game that certain uh, certain Africans have played amongst other Africans, and it's unfortunate because if they didn't, maybe we'd all be in a different position right now. And that and that gets really to the point of um, why why this channel itself is called the Morris Diaspora. You know, it's like. The more I dig into history itself, especially into what we're speaking on right now, um, I'm finding more and more that the origin of who we know today as the Moors comes directly. I found some great sources today. Hopefully, I'll have, we'll have time to share some stuff. So um, if you're watching, definitely um, get your tea, get your water, maybe pop some popcorn because it's going to get interesting. We're going to play some stuff. Some of the stuff is going to be, if you will, against the grain. Uh, historically, things that haven't been really uh, touched on or or pushed forward. Like some, uh, obviously, the research had has been done. The data is there, but I don't see many people uh, dealing with it. So we're going to uh, move forward. Let me see what this next slide looks like. Ah. Let me know if you can call. I can't hear it if it's I know I see it playing, but I, I just can't hear it. Hold on, let me call. <clears throat> so if you kind of remember what it said, um this is basically the clip that you posted uh in, on social media. I just re-downloaded it uh and re-clipped it. So it's about a minute long, starting at that same point from where you started from. Uh, the sound is playing on here. Um, so if, if you're not able to hear it, you'd probably have to be able to hear it on on the YouTube page. But I'm just going to let it play. I'm going to back it up and let it play just for the people. And then um, what you remember from that clip, you can definitely go in because it'll it'll be right on time.
I mean, I think at this point they've already said Edita, if memory uh, serves me right. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. So I just got one question um, for the individual that created this video, because I have not heard anybody, anybody, anybody in this conscious community bring up Edita prior to it. I started bringing it up, you know, so it was that was like the first thing that caught my eye. And then the, the second thing is, um, it's not to say the information like he isn't onto something, but it's to, it's to find out where did you get that information? Like, because I haven't heard any of the brothers talk about that, you know, especially since I know who this individual has worked with. I'm like, I know for a fact, hey, if anything, we'll talk about Ethiopia. Hey, you so know, again, a lot we're, of not, them. We're, not, we're not trying to offend anybody, but if, uh, you know, just so the people know who we're talking about, um, you know, I don't want to be vague. I just want to make sure that if the people are out there, and uh, they do hear this that they know who we're talking about. So, you know, feel free to. Well, out. I mean, it's it, 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 it's all of them at this point, right? Because I've heard every single one of them bring up Ethiopia. So it, it's it really it's up to the <laughs> to the listeners to go and just type in conscious community and see what they say about East Africa. They always talk about this Ethiopia. They'll tell you they're so Afrocentric. But they'll push this Ethiopia down your throat when they had they didn't write no Bible. They're not connected to no to any of that, any of that. Their kingdoms are older than the ones you find in Edija. The language that is dominant, right, in Ethiopia comes out of Edija, which is Giz, which is another connection to this video because he's talking about the Phoenicians. Let me stop you there because I I'm, I'm I want you to hold that thought. I'm going to scroll through a few of these slides and I'm going to get up to where you're talking about so that people have some references. As you can see, I've been doing my my due diligence. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm making sure I'm, I'm touching all the points that need to be touched. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And we can... Uh, backtrack and touch on on each of these things as we go but let's uh boom so you, you mentioned giz right? oh there it is Matara Eritra. exactly so can, can i say something about this real quick before you move forward go ahead uh, and there's a lot to be said too that, a lot it, to especially since we got the title egypt but go ahead so what all right so one thing I've noticed is the dating bit of the is language is based on this particular uh, in script scripts that are available on this obelisk in Eritrea, right? Um, and that being uh, five thousand years ago, you know. So this this is dated to five thousand years ago which gives it um peculiarly enough this title right here so i don't know if you could see that hopefully that's big enough um is it the one that talks about it's the father of all languages that's right so yeah i didn't even have to see it i just said because i saw where you was trying to connect the dots to uh, yeah yeah so it's saying this gives the oldest language it says gives language is believed by scholars to be circa five thousand years old making it the oldest of all languages considered the father language the language is still spoken today by southern semitic peoples like the ethiopian and eritrean peoples and you know of course we're going to deal with ethiopian but for the for the conversation uh one thing that i you know, it's like it's like one of those things where it's like it makes you feel kind of crazy because you know better than to use certain terminology. But for the psychology of dealing with other people who may not be aware of certain things, it's pretty interesting. Uh, you know how you have to be, what should I say, uh, flexible uh, to some extent so that uh so that people understand what you're saying 
You get what I mean? One hundred percent. It has to be palatable for the for the consumers or whoever you're trying to put this information to. There you go. All right. So that that's a little bit better. So when I put these up and they're a little small, I'm gonna try to blow them up, and so that way people can see the uh, the source there at the bottom if they wanna. I'll look that up, but please uh, go back and uh, say what you were saying about Giz. And as as you go along, I do have some other slides dealing with Giz, so I'll, I'll probably uh, stop you just to kind of show and prove or to demonstrate what you're speaking on. Okay. No worries. Yeah. So exactly. So once again, uh, the the one thing though um, I don't like to deal too much with is these dates that they give because. Um, and you remember three years ago, they weren't really saying this, right? Even when we would look this up and people would just do the Google <laughs> on Clubhouse, um, yeah. that you would, you you know, it, it would just pop up as something completely different. So I feel yeah. like we touched into this algorithm and people are starting to realize because there are linguists like uh, Christopher Eric that shows you where he breaks down the, lingu uh, the language family tree. And it connects you to certain places. When you go into certain parts of East Africa, like right now, presently, if anybody just Googled Sudan, they would see a place called Kusala. Kusala would be part of Sudan. You ask anybody, and I've asked them too, they would say this is Nubia. Matter of fact, if you Google it, if you if you Google Kusala dot and just pull it up, it will show you Sudan, right? But if you go to Kusala, yeah, K A S S. Yeah, K A S S L A. A L A. Yeah, Kassala, Sudan. Uh huh. And then put pull up the, the there should be a if you if, if you can get a map so we can show the viewers where it's located because you know. So that. that is that is that pretty decent? Nubia. Yeah, which which most people call Nubia because then there's other landmarks like the the Nile that people can clearly see um, the water. So, but the reason why um, we're showcasing you the better map while you do that. Okay, the reason why we're showcasing this is because this is one of the revi like revisionists or re re uh, this. Uh, I don't know, underhand about history they're doing, right? They're changing the history completely, but they'll tell you Kesala is a Nubian, ancient Sudanese, blah, blah, blah. This is actually Edita, ladies and gentlemen. If you visit this place, this is Edita. If you go and get, there's a book called, well, I could just read out of the book where it shows how parts of Edita was partitioned to Sudan and Ethiopia, right? Um, mm -hmm. When we start to look at the connections of these individuals that were behind it, then you actually see a bigger picture of why editor has been shut off for simple fact, the original Bible is written in Gaius, it's a Semitic language, right? That comes out of editor. The, mm -hmm. these, these sick people that are running around throwing off the balance of the earth and the vibration, right? Because I truly believe we, we, we are, we're energy, right? And, some people are tapped into wrong energy because all they want to do is destruction, right? They just want to go through, what is it? Coming through, uh, uh, man. coming from and to the earth or through the earth, uh, doing as I please. I'm paraphrasing, obviously, but uh, uh, it's some devil stuff. It's sick stuff, it's low vibration. It ain't high vibration, right? So when we start to understand that and see, these are the same individuals that <laughs> that they were fighting. These are the same individuals. Those bloodlines have been remaining the same. So it was only right for them to wipe Edita out of history, everything they've ever done. Because when you look at the first church, the first church in all of Africa, right? And we, I can, you know, debate the world, but let's just stick with Africa for now. The first church in Africa is in Edita. The first mosque in Africa is in Edita. <laughs> the oldest Semitic language is in Edita. We're demonstrating how Edita connects to Tamil, India. When you go talk to an individual that does a human genome, well, you can't talk to him, but he has YouTubes and videos. Uh, Shang, Shang, uh, Chen Li or Jin Li, Jin Li, 
uh, out of Shanghai University, connecting certain groups back to East Africa. Uh, what we're showing you guys is it's actually Edita that we should have been focused on instead of Ethiopia or Nubia and Kush. Because you actually have every choice that are Kushites, but they don't tell you that, right? Mm -hmm. They don't tell you that Moreau was subservient to Demote or Adelus, which is in Edita. When you pick up a book like Throne of Adelus, it breaks it down about a script that's written in Giz. We've already broke down that in Matara, Edita. There's a Stele. There's an obulus, same obulus, right? You see all through Egypt, same obulus. You see in DC, <laughs> right? And then when you break it down, Atara, you take that A, put it in between, before the T, that's Ma'at, and then Ra. Ma'at and Ra, Matara. So people don't, you know what I mean? Like I, I could do crazy stuff like that all day and show the connection. Let me stop you one quick second, because I want to, um, because you're dropping like, major major bombs right now and like <laughs> i want to i want to reverse so they can see the slow motion of the bombs you just dropped so you know so they understand so you just you just said the first church in all of africa so this here says uh deborah cena uh in Tigrinya is a monastery in the highlands of eritrea near Karen in the Ansiba region. It was founded in the fourth century by Saint Abba Salama, making it one of the oldest churches in the world. Okay. So, you know, this is, uh, I think this is pretty key here because what you just told us about uh, Kasala, right? Am, am I saying that correct? Yeah, Kasala. So when I first look this up, right, it says the earliest known physical evidence of a church in sub-Saharan Africa is 4th century AD a basilica that was excavated in 2016 at Beta Samati in northeastern Ethiopia. You see that? And then and then if we get the map, right, and we yeah. show the <laughs> ladies and gentlemen that where mm -hmm. Edith has located, you will see that is northeast. But for some reason, uh, and we're going to break this down in future videos, why yeah. it's like that. But go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to just clear that up because when I just typed it in, oldest church in Africa, it gave me northeastern Ethiopia. But when I said oldest church in Africa and added Eritrea, it like cleared it up. Oh, it, this monastery is in the highlands of Eritrea near Karen in the Ansiba region, etc. cetera. Um, then uh, let me go back to these slides here because you also made a claim that I think is is key. The mosque. Yeah, you made you made the claim of the mosque, right? So let me see. I have that in there somewhere. Maybe. Oh, where did I put? Oh, hold up. All right, mosque. Oh, it's at the top. I'm sure. Oh, here it is. All right. <clears throat> so Africa's first mosque, Sahaba Mosque, Masawa Eritrea, built between 610 and 620. <laughs> Believed to be the first mosque on the African continent and the first mosque in the world, built by the companions of Prophet Muhammad in the 7th century. And you got to ask yourself, why would they go from anywhere in the world? Why would they go to Edita first and then build the, the mosque? If Ethiopia, like, I'm not trying to pick on Ethiopia, but one thing for sure, two things for certain, a lot of the history has been given to people wrong, right? So we're just trying to show you guys where the fallacies lie. So when there was an issue, 
guess what? He said, you know, and peace be upon him, go ahead, uh, you know, um, go, go to East Africa, go to Eritrea, and you will be safe. <laughs> so when we look at this place is already being named, what, the land of gods, right? Doing oh. things mere men cannot do. And then you got the first church, the first mosque. I mean, people need to start giving it like a little bit of respect here or they just, I mean, I'm starting to think they just don't know better because I don't know how they can get. Got I don't to, know. Got to put some respect in that, bro. You got to. So let's, let's dive yeah, yeah. into that just a little Let's dive in just a little, little bit here. Let's see here. Can you see that? Yeah, Tanetta. So, yep, Tanetta. At times, the ancient Egyptians called Punt Tanetta, meaning God's land. This referred to the fact that it was among the regions of the sun god, which, you know, this can be debated. That is, the regions located in the direction of the sunrise to the east of Egypt. You know, sometimes when you when you get certain stuff, it'll they'll go off target to kind of throw you off the main path of what's really going on. But if we dig a little bit deeper, because, I mean, that's a great point. The land of Punt is Eritrea. Okay. Let's see here. Let's see what this one says. Why is the land of Punt famous? The land of Punt, Egyptian, alternate Egyptological readings, Puene, was an ancient kingdom known from ancient Egyptian trade records. It produced and exported gold, aromatic resins, black wood, ebony, ivory, and wild animals. Re recent evidence located it in northwestern Eritrea. Okay. I can keep going. I got many slides on punt, but please continue. I just I just wanted to show and prove as you say stuff. Uh, because last time I, you know we had some technical difficulties. So I just right. want to make sure we're covering things and showing people what's going on. Right. And then I mean just as far as like symbolism, right? When we look at the oldest archaeological site in all of East Africa, it's an editor. It's in symbol, similar to like Abdu symbol. When you start going and looking at certain uh, landmarks now, and where Abdu symbol fits, when you go on that cataracts or the Exodus route, so another connection to Egypt. Um, when we like I said here, um, what I said last time, nefer, the word nefer, <laughs> that means something completely different in our language, right? But it's odd that every time, um, a lot of the images show wings. So when you can connect those wings that they start to show and what that word means, then shows a little bit of a connection. Um, what else? Uh, the the onk symbol. That's a beautiful thing connecting it is. So when you look at the most sacred symbol in ancient Egypt and you go and look at the get is alphabet, you will actually be able to locate it within the okay. get is alphabet. Let, let's let's do that. I don't know if I have the complete alphabet on mm. here, but I do have some get is writing. Let's see. We should All be right. able I can't see that. Let me see. If you just if you you when you see it you'll see it you'll know it I just gotta oh see where I see it okay it's right. uh at the bottom the second row from the right uh from the bottom the fourth one up uh, it's the fourth symbol up I'm gonna make two, it a little three, bit four. I'm gonna make it bigger oh yeah 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 I see it there you go there you go so. Not and then I mean when uh, when we start looking actually at these letters here, these, these, this alphabet, we can actually plug and play the the style in which this is written, and you can see it in many other different parts of the world, right? You can see it in Mesopotamia, 
Because if it's Semitic, it's going to look similar to this 100%. Otherwise, it's not Semitic. And then we got to remember, where does that word even come from? How did they connect it? They kept connected back to a biblical uh, time. Well, the first individual that made us aware of this was Musi, not Moses or Moshe, because remember, we're in East Africa. Um, so when we understand that, then we start to make sense of what is been going on. Like the song, what's going on, what's going on? You know, we got to really. So I don't know if you can see that there, just speaking of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. right. Considered so, even older than, it is 100% older than Hebrew. It's older than, and here's the, the, the nonsense, right? A lot of people will use the King James Version, right? But that King James Version cannot predate, first of all, the Greeks <laughs> in Moses' time, or Musa, right? When we're looking at these first five books, they weren't talked about. There's no mention of these people whatsoever. There's, a, there's not one single mention of these individuals. How is it possible that they, since Johnny come lately, have this figured out? You know, this is clearly a translation. But when you look at Tuahedo, right, which that's what it's uh, the Bible is called, and Tuahedo means one, it's not a version, it's not a copyright, it is the original. Got it. So, so right there, I just uh, was backing up what you said there. Uh, it says, is, is the classical language. And of course, here it says Ethiopia. We're just going to, you know, we're going to work with that for a second because we know what, what we're really saying. Uh, we can get into that a little bit more so that we can uh, kind of clear up any confusion around that. As a member of the Semitic language family, its relatives include familiar languages like Hebrew and Arabic. Now, notice it said it's familiar languages. So that, that's a reference to family, right? The reason why I bring that up is because what was the first thing we said about Giz? It is considered the father in the family of languages, the Semitic languages specifically. And I, I'd argue possibly the father of all language uh, based on uh, not only our conversations, but my findings uh, since. So um, this is something that really requires uh, more in-depth study by those who are interested in studying linguistics, language, uh, the history of language, and the connections between the languages. Uh, there's so much to get into, Dylan, here uh, with the Giz. Um, but yeah, please continue. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we, we, I mean, we've covered a pretty decent amount. You know, um, this uh, when it comes to Giz, these languages these kingdoms connecting at the end of the day, what we're doing is once again, connecting the dots back to Editor. Because that is, and when we look at symbolism too, you know, the beginning of that crescent and where it is, right? And what is the, uh, what is that supposed to symbolize when we looked at- You wanna go, right? go back to the alphabet? Um, no, we don't have to go back to the alphabet, um, but, when, but th that those alphabets, right? We like I said, we can see that across the world, literally that similar style on where they got it from. Because if it's the father of all languages, then obviously when these individuals navigated right to these faraway places, they were using a certain language. And what's crazy to me is that when you connect ancient Egypt to Eritrea, people will say oh, well, nobody understands any language or the language that was spoken in ancient Egypt. When throughout, throughout the, the year, or when, not the years, but throughout history, right, they tell you to multiple different times in history that Egypt was doing commerce with Eritrea, the land of Punt. So to do commerce with someone, you have to what? You have to be able to speak the language. How am I going to do commerce with you if I can't communicate with you? Yeah. You know, so it's like simple common sense things that people don't really like uh, 
hold hold tight when they hear it because they'll go over it you know i've heard them all say oh yeah uh you know well we've learned through our studies that uh the the travels and the journeys they've been through uh were to many places and one of those places was the land of plenty and then they'll go to champion was the one that broke it down because without him we wouldn't have been able to what what are you talking about why are you why are you saying you're screaming you afrocentric but then really low key you kind of just uh really not you know you, you you're eccentric at heart and you don't even know it subconsciously because a lot of the information you're spewing don't make sense to us that are from that part and what's crazy is they'll get like brothers and sisters from west africa <laughs> to speak on east african history that's crazy <laughs> you just speak with people from these areas and ask them don't be afraid to say hey have you heard of any of this does this make sense to you and we will tell you you know so um at the end of the day all roads don't lead to rome but they lead to home and that's editor um the airy chancy the pericolous of the airy chancy uh the moment uh memorandum all the uh, 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 uh what is it the it's called the memorandum something uh every chair um that's another set of information what uh what else did they oh there's also when we when we start to break down like yemen oh man there's a whole king's list of ancient every chance in the yemen king's list that mm-hmm. people have never even touched on which i think is phenomenal to me because uh there's it just shows from a certain story that's told about uh a king that went north east south and west and conquered right a, a ruler mm-hmm. and when we see these connections from ancient egypt to these landmarks in ethiopia or sudan kush uh yemen and you see that it connects back to edita all the way to tamil to edita I mean, we're talking about some of the most ancient civilization in history because we cover the Indus Valley, we cover Mesopotamia, we cover Sabians, ancient Egyptians, Kush, right? <laughs> and it all goes right back to Edita. So let, let me, uh, let me, we go, I'm going to slow up again, I'm going to back it up, and then I'm going to bring it back to what you were just talking about because, I mean, I, I literally have slides from everything you're saying just about except for the king's list i don't have that yet so that's what i will be doing some uh research on so rem- you 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 told me about a uh conversation you had with uh the brother that goes by the name captain tazaria right? oh yeah that guy that dude is so he's a walking contradiction that yeah. brother is a <laughs> you also put me on to a debate uh, that happened three months ago with uh, one of his uh, underlings. Uh, who does? Oh yeah, very European. Um, so I was like a colonizer, right? Yeah. So <laughs> was, um, and I, I, you know, listening to his conversation and listening to Tazariak, and it's interesting because I haven't listened to them or anything that Tazariak has said in quite some time. I don't, you know, generally uh, listen to him. I. I have seen a debate with him years ago. Uh, so, I mean, I thought he was a little more level headed. Um, but when I heard, I went back and watched the video that you had your conversation with him. And uh, you were right. He was uh, pretty disrespectful and, uh, you know, quite egotistical in his stance without having much information to go on. Uh, So here's one of the things that I wanted to touch on briefly about the Hebrew language uh, also associated with the Giz language. So it says here Hebrew, but it's it's specifically to a point that Tazariak had made about not being African. And it says Hebrew is part of the Canaanite language group and is considered a Semitic language, part of the family of Afro-Asiatic languages with speakers and roots in North Africa and Southern Asia. Hebrew is related to Punic Phoenician and Moabite 
uh, all languages found in the area of the Mediterranean Sea in ancient times. So I just wanted to uh, briefly touch on that. Um, and I wanted to touch on this as well, because this kind of goes back into what we were talking about regarding uh, when we said Giz. When you look that up, you'll see that it's the father of languages. But here we can see Sanskrit is identified. Uh, you see here, let's just read it. So it says Sanskrit. Um, I actually put the question in, who is the mother of all languages? And Sanskrit came up in the beginning. Sanskrit stood as mother of all languages and encouraged all languages and was the reason for their growth and prosperity. One may, no may note that most of the works in Sanskrit have been translated into other Indian languages, right? And so you can see the source here for that. And you can go check that. But let me show you something here. <laughs> because this will demonstrate that the father is also the mother. Over 100 years ago, Sir William Jones pointed out that Giz and Sanskrit writing are one and the same. He explained that this was supported by the fact that both writing systems went from left to right. Sanskrit and Giz share you. This says identical vowels. I don't know if they mean to say identical or if this is just a, a typo in the same order. And the vowels were annexed to the consonants. So this is speaking to the linguistics of the languages and their similarities. And uh, if I dig a little bit deeper. You'll see here. Uh, hey, while, while you're while, while you're pulling that up, do you remember um, on Clubhouse when we had the brother Hyder and Ruben, and I, I was building with them, showing them the connections, like, I, the, and that we're we're talking about this because you're bringing up, you know, Sanskrit and and, and talking about this history. It's like <laughs> we put in this work with individuals from around the world, yeah. and we're talking to them, asking them. Is this true? Do you know anything about this? And they, when when I started bringing up some of those, uh, the, some of the connections, they say, "Yeah, we do. We know exactly what you're talking about." Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> but the history that a lot of these individuals are pushing out here in the West is because they think, you know, and that's why I believe they use the colonizer tricks because think about it, they're pl they're playing on the weakness or the ignorance of the brothers and sisters here in the West, because they either don't care enough to look this information up or they don't have the means or resources to get the answers. Because if they knew that they did, they wouldn't play these games. You know, they wouldn't be able to get away by saying some of the crazy stuff that they say on the side of the net, just because they hold a degree. That degree means nothing if you're sitting out here lying to the people. That's a fact. Yeah. And, uh, like so so to even take it just even further right so speaking to some of the gentlemen you just mentioned uh, it says here sanskrit sanskrit is an ancient indo-aryan language that originated in the swat and northern punjab regions of pakistan it is considered sacred by hindus many languages in pakistan india nepal and bangladesh are derived from sanskrit so again what i'm reading here is just showing a further um depth of how far this thing goes so it says there is no indian etymology that explains nagari as the name of the sanskrit language it is clear that Dev devangari means divine city or sacred city or city of god interesting right because now we're talking uh, about <laughs> now we're talking about pun again that right. is why that is why the term script is placed in brackets in your definitions, meaning the urban script of the deities, divine urban script. OK, let me continue to the next slide. Now, look here, Davangari. I've already showed the slide, but Davangari is the true name of the Sanskrit. And as you can see here, the script is the same. So the mother and father of language is Giz. I I challenge anyone to uh, bring forth evidence that says different. 
Um, I saw only one other language, I think, that they said. And the reason why they didn't put Giz on this list is because uh, some people, some scholars identify Giz as a dead language and only used in lit liturgical uh, or like religious right. ceremonies. Religious census, right, right. And which, and, and it makes sense for them to do that because at the end of the day, what we're trying to illustrate to people is that they are deliberately putting etica on the back burner, if anything, not at all on any burner. They just, you know, not even talking about it, trying to put it, keep it on the hush. But, you know, the all, all truth comes to light, you know, you can't hide it for so long. So with that being said, you know, when we look at these connections, you will see ancient Asians going to these places, right? Every single one of them. Um, so even when we look at, they would say the king of the, uh, for the Greeks, right? What was his name? Um, during the battle of Troy, his name was King Menmon or something to that effect is what they would call him. And they, they say he's an Ethiopian king, right? Mm -hmm. But we know Ethiopia wasn't <laughs> at that time doing anything close, remotely close to any of that. So it's just, it's just, uh, you know, makes you go, huh? So if it's not Ethiopia, who could it possibly be? You know, who are these Phoenicians? And as that slide earlier was trying to illustrate, right? It just briefly said Eritrea without really going into detail. But um, it is Eritrea, ladies and gentlemen, you know? And, and I know a lot of people are gonna be so emotional, they're gonna respond without even doing research. And that's good for us because we want y'all to respond. We want you guys to come and debate us. Come and prove us wrong. Prove me wrong, please. I love to be wrong, you know? I, I, I wanna be wrong because I'm human, I'm not perfect. But sure. when it comes to this history, I haven't been wrong. I've been talking to pastors, rabbis, uh, conscious quote unquote community, which I feel like is unconscious. You know, it's, they're not really conscious if you were. If you spent how many years and you keep saying the same thing, and when an individual from that location you speak of is explained to you like, hey, look, brother, there is some information that you might want to be hip to before you start talking up the side of your neck. You know, and it's crazy to me because a lot of these individuals, but I also feel like they understand that with these streams that they're monetizing it. So it's a form of business. I get it. I'm not trying to knock your hustle, but at least tell the truth while you're selling a little bit, you know, <laughs> like give people vain if you're going to charge them, but don't charge them and give them fiat. Don't charge them and give them some, 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 the okie doke. And, you know, uh, so if you see what I got up on the screen right now, again, this is just lending to more antiquity. You can see Bob Walter discovered at the top, it says out of Africa migration. Bob Walter discovered the oldest evidence of stone tools near a marine environment dating at 125,000 years old. The find suggests early human ancestry migrated out of Africa north along Eritrea's Red Sea coast. A hundred percent. And even on along that coast too, you will find uh, animals or uh, fish or um, uh, that is only native to that part of the world in Eritrea and nowhere else over 200 species. Mm. Wow. So um, again, because you know, the, the title of this uh, particular demonstration is the origins of the ancient Egyptians. So as you can kind of see, the, the topic uh, has been centered around uh, Eritrea, right? And there's a reason why. So let's, um, let's dig a little bit deeper. Let me go back into these slides here. I'm going to slide up here because here's kind of where we left off last week. Not sure if you remember that. Right. I think we only got to like two slides, maybe, if that. Yeah. I think we so went to way we... more slides today than we did last time. Definitely. Did we touch on this one? 
Uh, let's see here. To the Bible, these people, the descendants of Ham. Um, you know, we didn't touch yet. Um, it's, I got to get the book, but I can't. Let's see. Okay, so Mesopotamia, so Ethiopian and of Canaan, Mesopotamia to settle with his children on the banks of the Nile, according to the Bible. So it shows where these individuals, even from Mesopotamia, come from, connecting it back to East Africa. So this this book is illustrating um, a couple of things, and this is uh, the opinion of all the ancient writers on the Egyptian race. So this is another thing of um, that I was using when I was trying to explain to Brother Reggie. Um, on the time. That's the source. Yeah. So this is a uh, this is in Shik G uh, Shik Anthony Jacques' book, and it's referencing uh, Gaston Maspero, uh, eighteen forty six to nineteen sixteen, um, and which is is odd because. Once again, we are here trying to rewrite the wrongs. When they use, like Brother Reggie always kept trying to tell me, you know, oh, it's that black, black Egypt, black Kush, black Nubia, black this, black that. We never called ourselves black. Even commit uh, the, the individual that he likes to use, right, Champion, has been referenced in the book that he champions, uh, you know, by Sheikh Anthony Jop talks about how they never describe themselves as being black. So this is just more information or evidence to show people, right, that what they're telling you is not true. Just come talk to us. That's all we're saying. Sit down, have a conversation. You know, you what do they say? Conversation rules the nation. If you could get a little bit of game that's the truth, you could really make some changes. But a lot of people are stuck to these lies, man. It's like the truth is harder than uh it's hard to believe. No, that's true. I'm 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 checking out this source here and I'm I'm noticing something and I, I know there's a few words missing, right? But it, it basically says here uh that the unanimous testimony of ancient historians they belonged uh what does that say to the something race? To the Negro, uh, to the African race, read okay. Negro. Which first settled in Ethiopia. But we know what we're talking about when we say that, right? 100%. Because, and this is the beauty about evidence and information, how we can jump from one thing to the next thing and we still could connect it. That's how you know it's the truth. A lie can't do that. A lie can't keep jumping from one thing to the next thing still and still be solid. That's right. It can't. Right. Yeah, so what we what 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 we are seeing here, ladies and gentlemen, is many things. First of all, this author is conceding Canaan. Canaan or Canaan is going to be huge too when dealing with these Israelites. Mm -hmm. So it's connecting Canaan or Canaan or um, Kush <laughs> Ham is connecting um, Musia because we're talking about East Africa. Got it is it. connecting Mesopotamia. <laughs> I mean, what this is thing that? has. What is uh -huh. that word before Nile? What is that saying before the Nile? It says after where Ethiopia's, uh, it's got the yellow marker through it, the highlight. Uh, let me see if I can find the book. <clears throat> but the reason why I'm saying that, because I just wanted to get the, a full picture, but it says here, the Nile following the course of the river. So this would be following the Yam Suf, correct? 100%. And it says they gradually maybe get to the Red Sea. Moreover, the Bible states that Misraim, uh, son of Cush, right, or son of mm -hmm. son of Ham, right. Uh, and then it says, what is that? Brother of Cush. The uh, brother of Cush, yeah. And then it says the Ethiopian end of Canaan. And of Canaan, okay. okay. Uh -huh. And so this is telling you where Misraim comes from. That Misraim, son of uh, Ham, right, who is the brother of Cush. So if, right. this is basically saying that because this is also connecting to, uh, who, let me see, bring it up. 
Okay, because it, it touches on it here. So according to the Bible, Egypt was peopled by the, what does that say? Off short, I'm not sure what that word is. Ancestors of the blacks, the descendants of Ham and Misraim, Foot and Canaan, the descendants of Cush. Right? So it's saying that all of these people and the Canaanites, right? are the if you will the ancient people of what is called israel today right so these are descendants of the ancient kushites you know these are africans that we're talking about you know I, and i heard the brother really trying to say oh y'all are hamites well according to this information hamites and canaanites and <laughs> misraheem the kushites are all family Right, and if if they what 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 what's crazy though is um, to to say the Canaanites, well then where does that line come from, right? Where does their line really come from? So see, they don't even know their own history. They sitting here talking about Babel. Yeah, man, y'all gonna end up like that place because at the end of the day, you're not putting right information out. We've already established Hebrew is not even older than the oldest Semitic language get is. We're also showing it's in a geographical location in East Africa. There's only so many kingdoms in ancient time, right? So we're not only showing that, but then showing the connection of ancient Gips, right? Or Gipsy back into the land of Pun or into Eritrea. Okay, we're also showing that in later times, we're gonna show the connection of Nimrod. We're gonna break down Sargon. Right, because that's that Mesopotamia that they're alluding to right now, and yep, they're going mean, to show you how they they were speaking a certain Semitic language. So look at the bottom of this page, right? And I know again it's cut off on both sides here, but it says people of the Near East, Misraim, still designated the entire coast of Palestine and Phoenicia, right? Uh, and I can't see Sina, probably the site from which Nimrod left for Western Asia. And then it's a blank there, the kingdom of Nubia. So it's saying Nimrod came from Nubia. Right. Western Asia. Bro. And, then is- it, and, and, and we know where Western Asia is, but when we then look into Nimrod and where they say he's from, then we're going to go to a place. Uh, we're going to, I think we got to break down Nakata. Um, and I have a couple of slides, not slides, but some evidence and information. Um, on this and these individuals of who they are and why there's an uh, actual sphinx in Eritrea. So when people p- get the book, um, it's called Archaeology of Ancient Eritrea. It has a sphinx on the cover of that book, right? And it's like a 700 page book, but it gives you a pretty amazing dive on certain things. Um, so that's something I also recommend people to pick up because I know that's the thing ladies and gentlemen people on the you know quote-unquote conscious community like say source up well we're giving you guys the sources and don't forget too since we're speaking of sources i would be a primary source born over there (laughs) you know that can still speak the language that we're connecting the dots to so ladies and gentlemen please don't let these people fool you right they have never even been to any child i don't think majority of them even (laughs) been to ethiopia I don't think a majority of them even been to all of uh, Sudan or parts of Sudan. They definitely might have a couple of them gone to Egypt, you know, but um, when it comes to that upper Nile or however you look at it, depending on the flow of the Nile, um, they have not touched on it because you can play any video going back eight years, six years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. They've never said Eritrea. Indeed. Um, so look at this. This is another um, slide that you sent me. And notice what's highlighted here. Uh, Abyssinia. Abyssinia. You see, you see that Abyssinia. Earth? Yeah. So when people inhabited Egypt, that is the Nile Valley between the Cyrene cataract and the sea came from Abyssinia to Sudan. So what it means is, and that's what I've always said, and you you can quote me on this because you've heard me say that maps of ancient Eritrea were much larger in ancient times. So it started from Abyssinia up. Now, if you ask most people, they'll say, oh, no, I pulled up a map. 
and Abyssinia is in Ethiopia. Well, pull up that map even larger because you'll see that the majority of that knowledge actually comes from the Editia side, which they have so um, conveniently drawn in. So let's, let's be clear. So let's make it some clarity for the people that during this time that we're talking about, the term Ethiopia didn't even exist. Right. Period. This it, it, what so this is referencing like if I'm you know and I'm I'm being uh, very how shall I say like I'm being very like I'm not I'm not using the full age that I could use I'm not going back as far as I could go because I I want to be generous to a point but I want to be um sort I'm looking for. Uh, what do Republicans call themselves? They call themselves uh, conservative. There you go. Thank you. I want to be conservative <laughs> with, with my estimate, with my estimates here. And because I, I found a source earlier that said about 5,000 BC uh, when re referencing this goings on. However, you know, there's enough evidence to say that at 5,000 BC, that the what we know today is the Egyptian calendar had already been developed, which takes at least 10,000 years to build uh, based on just using your eyes, you know, and whatever technology they had that we're not aware of uh, to do the calculations and the observations uh, to create such a calendar and such a uh, perfectly uh, tuned calendar. So, so to me, this is this is quite um, clear. I mean, we've kind of already answered it, but boom, the people come out of Eritrea. And in fact, let me pull up some, something else real quick. Because what did that say, Abyssinia? Yeah, you can like, even pull up a map of, of Abyssinia and show them. Oh, look, I, I already got you. That's <laughs> look. I went and not, bro, I was pulling it up. I got the most. <laughs> oh, let me see here. All right. I don't know how clear the. It might not be too clear. But one thing I noticed here, and I did notice when I pulled this up, is that under the country where Abyssinia, it says not only Ethiopia, but Eritrea, if you can see that. Exactly. Right. And when we look at that, uh, <laughs> that's just showing you, it, it, it's just them kind of coattail riding. You know, they ride in our coattails because to be considered great like that, where, where was, why is that the, the, the dominant language that is spoken in Ethiopia today predominantly comes from Editha. It doesn't even come from them. So when they talk about their ancient kingdoms or go in for a second. It, go ahead and go in for uh, a second. I'll be right back. Right. So when they're talking about uh, Abyssinia, you just have to ask them, well then what is the what what is it so great that they accomplished the, the feats that they accomplished? You won't find anything. Even their old kingdoms you will find that the, the understanding of stone building from Edita, because once again, we've already uh, established that the oldest archaeological site and symbol in all this East Africa, right? We've already established uh, as far as knowledge and spirituality, we had the first church and mosque, you know? So we're starting to see a whole lot of information that we're going to connect going back to Edita, the Peripolis of the Eritrean Sea. Herodotus himself has been quoted talking about Edita plenty of times. There's a book about a uh, throne, right? It's called The Throne of Adelus. And it illustrates how there is a throne and there's an inscription. And inscription is written in Ge'ez, right? And even that 5,000 years, I would say it's much older because once again, we got to remember, what did Dr. Ben say? Dr. Ben said that Egypt is the daughter of a different location 
Well, it's not the Ethiopia, obviously, because Ethiopia at that time wasn't doing anything nearly as close to what Eritrea was doing. Matter of fact, the maps of Ethiopia, when we think of it today, didn't even look like yesterday. We just broke down Abyssinia because they weren't even calling it Ethiopia. So when we see this and its focal point is stationed in Eritrea, we know, right, when we get that book and we read it and we see that this journey that was made by a king going north, east, west, and south. And then you go into Yemen. And when you go into Yemen, if you can read, write, or, or read in Arabic or, ta- or speak Arabic, then you might be able to speak with some individuals from Yemen and you will start to unravel some more connections, which will illustrate and show you that exact route that the king had taken, right, in that book that they're telling you about. So that cannot be a huge coincidence that we have individuals on that side, especially when you're dealing with the Sabian, right? When you're dealing with the old South Arabian script, right? You're going to find that in Edita. <laughs> so, and let's not forget, when you say Yemen, Yamanka in our language, <laughs> it's the same direction of where it is now. So these are just some of the connections and the dots that we're trying to, to, to connect for people, you know, going against the grain 100% because nobody is saying this. You're only getting it here first 100%. Um, well, you know, I'm, uh, I was back and I forgot to turn, <laughs> turn my mic back on. No, you uh, No, I, I put up the uh, slide for the uh, Sabines. Um, just a little bit on that just to give people an idea of what you're talking about <clears throat> because this is when you really do the math and you look at the kingdoms the successive kingdoms uh and one thing i noticed doing the research um it's always been like the the kingdom of the red sea you know what i mean um let me go back go back here for one second and maybe you can give me some more insight on this because this information is kind of new i think i've heard you say this word before um so maybe you can give us some more insight can you see that oh i lost my brother um so I'll go ahead and probably just jump back on. <clears throat> but this is uh, some history here. This is some civics, if you will. The Kingdom of Medri Bahri, Africa's first democracy, was in Eritrea. Medri Bahri, Africa's first democracy. Medri Bahri, land of the sea, was an independent Eritrean kingdom between 1137 and 1890. Its capital was in Debarwa. What made this kingdom so unique were the people of Medribahri had a sophisticated political process in which they elected their kings to power. Once elected, the king was bestowed the title of Bahri Nagasi, or Sea King. Every village and town in Medribahri elected their own king, with the king in Debarwa being the king of kings. To prevent a monarchy, the immediate families of the elected kings in Dabarwa were prohibited from being future kings. Moreover, to prevent abuse of power, the king's powers were limited by the laws of the land, making Medribari the first republic kingdom in Africa. It was deep. But, um, you know, I think we have abundantly... Uh, proven our point here um, as far as who or where the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians come from, or rather the origins of the ancient Egyptians. There are more sources. There's way more information um, that I could share regarding this. We're going to just keep it um, there for now. We've been on for about an hour and a half. I pray everyone has uh, 
been able to learn something. I could go a lot deeper on a few of these topics that we touch and I can go into more sources, uh, but I may, I'll save this uh, information for another time. I don't want to um, belabor any of the points. And matter of fact, I didn't even check to see if anybody put any uh, questions in the chat and I think I do see one. Okay, all right. Salam, salam. Well, with that being said, family, um, I'm going to close close this out. I'm going to play a commercial uh, for my company, and then we're going to close this out. With that, I say peace and love. Uh, please hit the like button. Please share this information. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we are doing our best to bring you consistent information uh, better than we have in the past. So um, the more feedback we get, that's going to, you know, cause me to want to give more information and do more uh, demonstrations like this for the people um, that, that, that actually, you know, get something from this. And uh so, yeah, if you have any questions, any concerns, please leave it in the comments or you can reach out to us directly and we'll um, see you next time. Greetings, peace and love and welcome to Smy Pharmacy Apothecary. We've been here since 2019 and although times have changed and healthcare has evolved, our traditions of compassion and professionalism thrives on. You are always at the heart of what we do, Smy Pharmacy. We heal. Visit us today online or in store at smithepharmacy.com. All right. All right. So definitely uh, check us out. We definitely um, we have what you need. If you're uh, dealing with anything, if you need a consultation, please feel free to give us a call. Visit us online, etc. Um, peace. Peace.